All right, Rebecca is with us in Fargo, North Dakota. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, um, Well, two years ago, before my husband and I started your plan, he had a um, emergency open heart surgery. He had an undiagnosed condition and uh, came out of his overnight surgery with an artificial heart valve and a synthetic aorta. Wow. How old is he? Now. Uh, he was 36 at the time. Mm, okay. And how long ago was this? Two years. Okay. How's he doing? Great. Yeah, Good. Doing awesome. Good. Okay. Um, but he can't get life insurance. I he suspect. Had it through his, he had it through his company, mm-hmm. um, and he has since changed jobs, and now the most we can get a hold of is like a $40,000 um plan, you know, through, through work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We, we worked with a few brokers and Did you try Xander? we were fine. Tried Xander. They couldn't help us. Okay. Yeah. I, I, um, I suspect, I, I think that's probably accurate. Yeah. Cause this is a pretty extreme surgery on a very young guy. And so I suspect over time though, he will become more insurable. Is that what you've been told? We're, we're hoping that, and we did finally find a broker who was able to get us in touch with Prudential, and they could do a five hundred thousand dollar policy on a twenty year term for two hundred and fifteen dollars. And we're just wondering, is that you know, that it seems like such a high amount for term. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you know. it's up to you guys. I mean, do you have children? We have a two-year-old. Um, he was three months old when all this went down, mm-hmm. and then we have one on the way in January. Okay. And what does your husband make? Uh, he makes about forty-seven thousand. Mm-hmm. And what do you make? Uh, right around that same mark. Okay. All right. Um, I, here's the thing: what you're balancing this off against is, is that's a very, very expensive policy. Um, Yep. And then the risk is, if God forbid something happens to him, you got to raise these kids. So right. I would pick the forty thousand up for sure. And I think you okay. can pick up some other odds and ends policies that are no met non medical, meaning okay. they don't. We, we, actually, we actually got an email from a, or a letter from a previous employer saying that he could continue the policy that they had with them if we just start paying that company directly it would just be another 40,000 but it's like $8 a month do it do it okay definitely do that that's a lot better deal than the other one right and so yeah. uh, uh in the other place you may be able to pick it up that's cheaper than we're talking about with Prue is um do you own a home we do call your mortgage company and see if they sell any mortgage life mortgage life is about 5x normal but Prue's quoting you more than 5X normal. Okay. And um, then you can just look at it. So we're talking about $2,400 a year out of your income of 90000 and you could have a half a million dollars in insurance. It's up to you as to okay. how worried you are about that. Um, but I'm with you. It, it's up to you. You know, how, mm-hmm. how are you going to feel if, God forbid, something happens to him? And, and well, you've got to raise these kids. That's, that's what we're worried about here, right? Right. Well, we we got on your plan a, a year and a half ago, and over the next nine months, we did uh, get debt free mm-hmm. twenty one thousand three hundred in nine months. Mm-hmm. And we listened to your radio so much that our son calls you Uncle Dave. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, we're just trying to make. Well, sure I mean, he, he, if you we, did do the proof policy, I would say let's do it and let's just plan on keeping it a couple of years. And during okay. that time, you know, finish off being out of debt, have your emergency fund, start really building wealth, and maybe yeah, well, he starts to become insurable with some distance between the event and, you know, the the longer it's been since he had the surgery, the more insured, more likely he is to be insurable at a reasonable rate. So I might go ahead and take it as a temporary thing. It's not your permanent answer, but I might take it as a temporary thing. Just say, you know, we're going to do this, and we're going to do it for two years, and then we're going to look at it again. That's, that's uh, with a baby and a two-year-old, yeah, I probably would. You're making 90 household, I probably would spend 2400 bucks. I probably would. And I'd pick up the other two, too, just for the fun of it, just have them in place. Because uh, they're not that expensive, and you have another eighty grand right there. And then, then let's just decide two years from now, try again, see if we can get a policy. 
and look at your situation. We're debt free. We got this pile of money. Oh, I feel a whole lot better now, you know, and that changes the equation. Thanks for calling in. See, folks, that's what happens. <clears throat> you want to um, not only have you, you want to have insurance that's not only at your company because of what he just experienced. You lose the insurance when you leave the company. In this case, they're letting him go back and get it for some reason, but that's unusual. Uh, but, uh, you know, you have an event and then you leave the company, you lose the insurance. You get a cancer diagnosis or a heart diagnosis or something like that. And the second thing that we get out of that call that you need to learn is this idea that as you decrease your debt, as your children get older, and as you increase your wealth, your need for insurance is going down. As you decrease your debt, increase your wealth, and your children get older. In other words, if you've got an 18-year-old, you have $500,000 in mutual funds, and you have no debt, your need for insurance is a lot less than if you have debt and a 2-year-old that you got to raise for the next 18 years, right? Or 16 years, or whatever you want to measure that. But the point being, the older the children get and, and, and or leave home as they grow up, and you would have zero debt and you build wealth, you do away with your need for life insurance over time. And that's just from good financial planning is all that is. So good question. Thank you for joining us. I'm sorry you're facing all that. I'm so glad he's doing so good. That's great. It's pretty amazing if you think about it. So that, that's why we don't buy whole life life insurance, which is roughly 20 times more expensive because you take the other 19 times and you do your investing there and you get out of debt there. So when you inv as you invest over time, and you say, for 20 years, I'm going to invest 15% of my household income because I paid off all my household debt, not counting my mortgage. And during that 20 years, I get my house paid off. And during that 20 years, the kids grow up and leave. And so now you're not 30 with a 2-year-old. Now you're 50 with a 22-year-old, and you're debt-free, and you've got five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000 in mutual funds. Now, if your husband dies in that situation, your wife dies in that situation, you know, you're debt free, no kids at home, and you got seven hundred thousand, if you had no insurance, you'd be just fine. And so you, you by by increasing your wealth, increasing your net worth, decreasing your debt, increasing your, your investments, and by raising the kids and they are grown and gone, or closer to grown and gone, your need for insurance dissipates every year. So in her situation, as they hang on for two more years, you know, the kids are two years older, they're two years further down the pike saving and investing, and, and they've finished up getting rid of the debt, except for the home and the house is even starting to go away. See, their, their need for insurance two years from now is less than it would be today. Now, we buy a 20-year level term to take you all the way out to give you a comfort level, but it changes everything if you start to look at the insurance through the lens of actually financial planning instead of the lens of what your insurance agent wants you to do which is give them a commission this is the dave ramsey show